Yo guys, what is up, Davis here. So this is actually gonna be the first setup video that you guys are watching. It's gonna tell you how to actually use your console online and mod online and everything like that. Uh, the first thing I wanna talk about is actually the setup and help. Um, so hopefully you read the paper. Why can't I bend this? You read the paper and uh, you know, it says setup and help and it says setup video right there and which would have brought you to this video. Now this is an outdated paper, so just kind of ignore it. Uh, I have to update this stuff, so when you get this paper in, it's gonna look a whole lot better. So um, well, there's a lot of helpful stuff on here, and you guys really need to read it, because a lot of people just skip it, and uh, I want you guys to actually listen to uh, this whole video. There's gonna be a lot of stuff in this video that you guys need to know about the basic stuff. Um, so like, here on this paper, you have, you know, pretty much almost everything you need to learn how to use it. So how to properly load your games and mod menus, that's not gonna be in this uh, this video. So you're gonna need to look at this link to learn how to do that. How to use a KV checker, that's also not gonna be in this video. Um, XBL connection fix errors, there's gonna be one in this video, one of them, and then, uh, Let's see, how to install games and mod menus. Um, you're not really gonna need that unless you, if you if you didn't buy mod menus from me, you're, you're gonna need to watch that. Uh, let's see, and then some other how-to, and then I have my contact at that. So you guys need to watch that. You'll also get an email from me, and it's gonna have kind of like, like the same stuff as that on the paper. Um, so be sure to check that out. You should have your order number on there. And if you are wanting to contact me about your console, you're gonna need to have your warrant, your uh, your contact, your order number, sorry. You're gonna need to have your order number. And when you contact me, just tell me your order number. Say, hey, uh, I have an issue or I have a question. And then give me your order number with through one of the contact us. So, uh, so yeah, I'm gonna get right into that. Uh, be sure to check the email. Be sure to read that paper um, and any other papers that you get. And also in the link in the description, there's probably gonna be more links than what you see on that paper. So be sure to look at that too as well. Um, and then we're gonna get right into the first thing you guys need to know about your console. Um, first thing you wanna do is you want to make sure you have a hard drive in there and uh, if the hard drive isn't loading when you first turn it on, just uh, unplug it and then push it back in to make sure that the hard drive is in there uh, because sometimes that comes loose during shipping. So just make sure you have that in there good and tight. Now, when you turn your console on, this is a modded console, so it's not, um, it's not normal. It's not just a retail console, play legit kind of thing. It has mods on it and it's a modded Xbox. It's a RGH. Uh, or JTAG, you know, whatever you want to call it. And a lot of people just use the eject button to turn their console on. And let me show you what happens when you do that. Um, by the way, take out any discs uh, in your console. Take that out and just put them aside um, until we're done with this video. So uh, just take out, yeah, take out any disc. And because sometimes that interferes with some of the mob menus and stuff that's on there. Um, but yeah. So. It boots up and the screen pulls up and you guys are like, what the heck is this? Is Zell reloaded, okay? And let me tell you, let me point out something. Just because it says Corona right here does not mean your console is Corona. I've had so many people be like, oh, my console is a Corona. And honestly, there's nothing wrong with the Corona at all. Just, just pointing that out to you guys. Uh, Corona's our great console. This is a Corona, by the way, and it's never froze on me or anything. Uh, it's my personal console and I love it. I wouldn't really sell it. So anyway, when you boot with the eject button, you turn it on like that, uh, th it's gonna take you to this blue screen. It's not gonna go past this. It's This is for your CPU key and DVD key. It's, it's all that's used for is getting the CPU key and DVD key. And you can also flash your NAND using Zell as well. Um, I'm sure there's tutorials online how to do that. Um, but that helps for like unbreaking and stuff like that. Uh, and you can also get your CPU key by typing in this IP right here. Uh, you're gonna need wired connection, obviously, but you're, you can type that in to get your CPU key on JRunner or XE Build. So that'll help with typing in the uh, this, the whole 32 characters of your of your CPU key. 
So, um, instead of booting with the eject button, boot with the power button because that's what you want. If you boot with the, the eject button, it's just going to start up and it's just going to load Zell and it's not going to go anywhere. So, um, yeah, so wait for this to boot. Usually it's pretty fast. Yeah, see, now it has to boot. So, all right. So now that, now that you know how to boot your console properly, we're gonna go on to the next part. Yo guys, so something I wanna show you guys that are really helpful is it's called bypassing the plugins. Now, say if your console is like stuck at the boot logo and it just won't go past, um, this is how you do, you, you fix, it's not exactly a fix, uh, it's just to get past the actual, the actual logo to actually fix the issue. Usually the issue why it's freezing is your plugins. Now, uh, there's two methods to do this. There's one you can do with a USB. I'm not going to show that in this video. Uh, there is a video on here on my YouTube uh, that'll show you how to bypass the plugins. It's guaranteed to work, and it should also be on your paper as well. Uh, go watch that if you need to do that. Um, but anyway, how you do it is you turn it on, and then you press the eject button. And like usually this will work. Sometimes it doesn't work for certain issues, uh, but uh, usually it does work. Um, so like usually why the console gets stuck on the boot logo is because of sometimes the servers and stuff go down and you have to bypass the plugins to actually fix that. Um, switch your stealth server and stuff like that. I don't know why it's taking forever to boot. But uh, anyway, what this bypassing the plugins does is it actually bypasses it bypasses your plugins, obviously, uh, and it also bypasses your KV, your stealth, you know, all that stuff. So it won't even uh, you won't be able to go online like this. Uh, that's normal. You're gonna get a connection failure error if you do this. It's it's a normal thing. So this is just using this is just a tip for you guys. If you ever get stuck on the boot logo. Um, it'll show you how, and this is showing you how to bypass that to correct whatever issue is making it, you know, have that issue. Okay guys, so this is part two of the video, and this is just be showing you guys how to check to see if you're on the latest dash. So your console booted up and it boots up to the screen. Um, you might not have any profiles or anything, uh, but just make sure you take out any discs, like I said before. Um, Make sure your hard drive's plugged in. Uh, and if you don't know how to sync your controller, because uh, I've had a few people, they've never had an Xbox. And uh, anyway, you just, if you need to sync your controller, just hold that button right there. And then that will start spinning like that. And that means your controller is trying to connect. And then you press the button right here. And then on the FATS, it's, uh, it's another button right above the power button, like right up here for the FATS. And uh, you can click that and then it'll sync and then see they're synced together now so uh, once you do that you're gonna press back and then go over to settings and system settings console settings and then go you're gonna go all the way down to uh, system info and like if you can just go up it's like a lot quicker so uh, yeah go all the way down to system info and you don't need to click on it so basically all you're doing here is checking to see if uh, if your console is on the latest dash or not. Because if it's not on the latest dash, you're not going to be able to go online. And you'll, you'll have to update your console to the latest dash. Now, currently right now, it's January 24th, 2017. This is the latest dash right now. It's 2.0.17511. So um, that's the latest dash right now and you just want to make sure that those numbers right there match this let me show you real quick uh, so on your paper and in the link in the description and in your email you should have like dashboard check and it'll have a link now this that paper is outdated like i said before uh it's going to take you to this link paste bin and this will tell it'll tell you <coughs> excuse me It'll tell you right here what the current dashboard is, and currently right now it's uh, 
it's 17, 5, 11, just like those numbers up there. So if those numbers match and that matches, then your console is updated to the latest dash and you're just about ready to go online. But uh, you guys need to watch this entire video because once you do that, you'll be able to ex understand your console like fully and it'll be so easy. <clears throat> so, um, you know, and then right here will be how to update your console if it isn't on the latest dash. Um, so yeah, be sure to check that out if your console isn't on the latest dash. If it is, then ignore everything from down here. Um, but if your console isn't, if your console it doesn't have a preloaded hard drive, like if you didn't buy a hard drive with your console, then you're gonna need to either purchase one from me. And uh, if you go to the store, click on the store tab and then scroll down uh, right here will be the hard drives and you can click on that and you can choose which one you want and for some reason it's not focusing so like slim fat and then choose so yeah and then you can choose what mob menus you want or if you don't want any and you know that's it and it's about 75 bucks you know depending which one you want so um, and then it'll be all set up with all these files right here and then your life is just so much easier so um, let's see so just make sure you have all that done and, uh, and then you'll be good to go and then um, if you're on the latest dash let me tell you guys um, if you're on the latest dash that number matches up with the pace bin numbers then uh, at the end of the video, you'll be online, okay? And you're gonna get a avatar update. It's gonna pop up and it's gonna say system update required. And all that is is an avatar update. You don't need to update your entire console again and risk breaking it. Uh, it's just the avatar update, it's fine. So just make sure, that's why I'm showing you guys to check to see if you're on the latest dash or not. Cause I'm gonna keep that pastebin link updated and all that good stuff. So. As long as that matches, then you can you can click yes to update that. Okay guys, so we got about two more, two or three more steps to go, and then your console will be online. So, um, what you're gonna wanna do now is, we're still on the same page as you can see, you're gonna wanna back out, and you're gonna go over to My Games. Uh, now, like I said, if you guys don't have that preloaded hard drive, uh, you can always go to the link in the, in the description. It'll show you how to, I'm sure there'll be some link down there that'll show you how to install everything. Or you can just purchase a hard drive for me. Um, you know, either one works. Um, <clears throat> so you're gonna go to my game and then scroll over to XEX menu. And you don't need to sign in. I I'm not gonna sign in. You can sign in if you want. Uh, but right now you really don't need to. And that is how you load XEX menu. It's that simple. Uh, right now we're in XEX menu right now. And if you click the back button on your controller right here, it'll load up with this. And it'll tell you the different controls and stuff. So be sure to look that, look up that and everything. And so when you load it up, It'll be game discovery. It'll show you all your games that you have on here or your mod menus or whatever you want to call them. Now, if you click on any of these, they're not going to load properly because there's a certain way you got to load these. And uh, so once you load this up, you have you have actually three different screens for XEX menu. Now, what I mean by screens is it's like different. Uh, I'll just show you. You click if you click RB it'll take you to the root of your hard drive and you can actually click X and you can switch back and forth from your USB uh, flash drive to your hard drive or other USBs that you may have and stuff like that. Um, and you, if you press Y, you can actually click copy, cut, paste, delete, and create a new folder and all that good stuff. So, um, you know, that's a lot of few things you guys need to know. And, so let's see, um, I'm going to be explaining to you guys um, some of the uh, apps, but uh, if you click RB again, 
it'll take you to this it'll take you to the skins you can change the skin um let's see all this stuff uh the temperature it'll tell you the temperature of your console um if it's like above if it's above 60 like 63c then that's actually really bad you don't really want it to be in 60c at all um and then your ip address which you'll be using for neighborhood we'll get to that in a second um so anyway just keep that stuff in mind don't forget about that um so one set of files has all your apps and stuff in there um and first thing i'm gonna explain to you guys is what's actually on the root of the hard drive um you have jrpc2 kv.bin launch ini ninja ini ninja.xex you know you got a bunch of stuff uh all these .xex files that are green right here all of those are, are uh plugins and your launch ini is actually what loads your plugins so um you know that's something to keep in mind as well you can actually take the launch ini and you can edit the launch ini on your computer and switch out plugins like that and then change it through uh neighborhoods so you know it's pretty simple um there's certain things to learn uh kv bin kv dot bin is your kv and i'll get to that in a, in a kind of towards the end of the video but uh you're not actually gonna have that on your hard drive i'm just i have it on mine for right now um you leave the, your console is going to be unbanned so you won't really need one <clears throat> um so purge that's a gta 5 menu xbdm is a plugin that connects your neighborhood to your xbox for your internet so if you don't have that plugin you won't be able to connect neighborhood to your xbox so always keep that on there uh, XDRPC and XRPC are other plugins for mod tools and stuff like that. Um, anyway, uh, if you guys ever have like connection issues, you can just delete this folder right here or delete everything inside of it and that should fix your issues, <clears throat> some of them. Um, let's see, games. Uh, if you guys want to learn how to properly load your games, then you need to go in the link in the description or look on the paper that you have and uh, learn how to load it from there. So this video will not be showing you how to do that. How to do that. Um, so if we go up to one setup files, uh, you're, you'll see Aurora dash launch freestyle dash, you know all that stuff. Uh, Aurora and freestyle dash are custom dashboards you guys can load them up and check them out um you're not gonna hurt anything <clears throat> you're not gonna hurt anything or mess up your console so don't even don't feel like you're gonna do that really the only way you can break your console is by flashing the nand and uh symbol 360 nand flasher is the thing you do that with so if you ever have to flash your nand and usually you're going to flash your nand to update your console eventually that's going to happen um you're going to need to make sure you have everything 100 percent correct um so yeah uh xm360 at the bottom that's used for unlocking dlc and games and stuff like that you're probably never going to use that um and then ninja files and plugins are just black backup plugins for you uh so they're always coming handy uh, i'm gonna go ahead and load dash launch and i'm just gonna show you guys what that looks like so just click click on dash launch installer default.xex and uh this is what it looks like when you load it up so as you can see at the top left uh my bad sorry top right uh it'll tell you your temperature and you know just make sure those are staying at a good reasonable temperature uh slim should usually stay like around 55 or and under c 55 and under c so uh let's see at the bottom right you have your motherboard flash uh rgh type um or glitch type sorry 
uh, either that could say JTAG or Glitch 2 or Glitch 1 and then your dashboard version so uh, we actually click LB on the controller it'll take us to this and you can actually load different stuff from your hard drive so like say if we wanted to load a game uh, we just click on that and uh, that's actually going to take a little bit to load say if we clicked on um, one set of files and then say if we wanted to load uh, Aurora we would just click on that and then go to there I mean that's just one way you can do that um, system info click on that and that'll give you your CPU key at the top left and then your DVD key at the top right uh, and then you can also change your fan speed down here so if we turn this all the way up you can hear the Xbox get loud and uh, I think that was my water bottle cracking by the way um, I wouldn't take this down anything below 60C definitely for fat consoles I would keep fat consoles at at least uh, 80C I mean not 80C sorry uh, 80% um, because fat consoles uh, they're more prone to getting rittering and stuff like that so um, and they run hotter uh, and then slims I wouldn't recommend taking it anything below 60 percent so um, just make sure every slim I, I send out is usually on 70 C I mean not C but percent so uh, just keep it on that and I mean if you want to you can keep it if you don't mind the sound and just turn that all the way up and that that'll be actually really good for your console it'll keep it cool and um, you shouldn't have any issues with it at all honestly with like rittering or anything like that so uh, you know the cooler the console is the more reliable it's going to be um, so then we just click save now you don't even have to mess with that fan speed uh, but I just please don't turn the fan speed down uh, if you don't know what you're doing because it's the fan speed can really cause your console to overheat and then it'll cause rittering issues and stuff like that and you know it just causes a big mess so if we click B one time it'll take us to this and let's see if you click RB it'll take you to network and then you can view your your live block and stuff like that uh, sometimes live block and live strong will need to be disabled for some servers to play online. Um, you can click A to disable and enable them. If we go click on plugins, these are your plugins right here. So as you can see, we have XBDM as the first plugin, which connects neighborhood. Um, let's see, and then you have Ninja and that is your stealth server so plugin 2 should always be your stealth server plugin 3 should be your gta 5 menu if you have one uh plugin 4 and 5 you really don't need them if you're gonna be uh if you're not gonna use mod tools some people do i usually keep them on jrpc2 and then xrpc uh but you know they're not needed <clears throat> honestly the last three plugins are not needed just that's uh, just how I have them set uh, because I can always just connect my modules easily. Um, so yeah, if we click A, it'll, it'll minimize it out. Uh, if you do want to set a plugin, so say we want to clear XRPC out, so you click Y on it, and that will clear it out. Then just click A, and then hard drive, and then you can select a different one. I'm just going to reset it back to XRPC and then after that uh, whenever you guys mess with something in dash launch you need to click RB and then go down to HDD and then you click X on it and that will save the, the launch INI and uh, if you click A and then X it, it's going to mess it all up so just make sure you just click X only on that and then if you click B it'll exit out and uh, I can show you guys Aurora and stuff like that. I mean, I really don't want to because it's kind of a waste of time. But I'll, I'll show you guys Freestyle Dash because that's kind of a, it's a cool app. Um, 
and you can like change the dashboard and stuff like that so uh, so now you guys know about dash locks and stuff like that you know how to open XDX menu um, let's see dash launch uh, we're gonna go to freestyle dash and then something else I can show you if you click this in so the toggle stick if you click that it'll uh, actually load the default it'll show the XEX files and usually that helps with like loading games faster and stuff like that so if we just click the default.xex for freestyle dash it should load up and as you can see it looks like a custom old dashboard um, there's a few things you can do in here like link you can actually play on your RGH with uh, with other modders and you can you don't have to have a KB and stuff like that and you can load your game from here uh, if you know how to set it up so yeah it's pretty sweet um, you can do Xbox Classic and Homebrew emulators Xbox Live Arcade and then this is actually where you extract your games from um, and then you can actually manage your stuff as well in here so you, it's a uh, file manager just like XEX menu and, and Aurora so it's pretty cool um, you can change your skins and stuff uh, you should usually have a few different uh, skins that I include on my console so um, let's see the dream theme is pretty sweet if you select it and then go back you can click reboot and then it'll just reboot uh, freestyle dash and dream theme should load so yeah then you have this and now this it might not actually look like this when you get your console but uh, if you go over here to skins and then go and press X on that you can change a lot of stuff click okay guys so this is gonna be like one of the last parts of the video I think the last part I'm gonna show you guys how to use neighborhood real quick um, just gonna fly by that real fast uh, so you're gonna need stuff to get online uh, and I'm gonna talk about that in a second but what you're gonna need to actually connect online depending what console you bought if you bought a slim slims already have a built-in wireless adapter so uh you won't need to buy one if you bought a fat console now that's a different story um you're either going to need to buy a wireless adapter for your fat console which is about 40 bucks uh you need to make sure it's for your xbox 360. if you get one of those usb ones that are for computers they're not going to work i've already tried it um or you could get a ethernet cable now this also works for slums as well um ethernet cables are better for like gameplay uh better for connecting and stuff like that um, it's just a faster connection usually for Ethernet cable that's why I'm not using it on this console right now but I usually always use that uh, how I have my Ethernet cable going is I have my router and then I have that going from there to this and then that plugs into the Xbox and then I have the cable from the router and that cable goes all the way through my closet through my room and it goes all the way downstairs and everything and <laughs> it's like a hundred foot uh, Ethernet cable and if you guys wanted to you could do that if your parents or whoever doesn't mind you running a long cable through the house uh, That would even be cheaper than buying a wireless adapter. So uh, Or you know, whatever is easier for you. It just all depends on how you want to set your stuff up But you're either gonna need one of the two to connect online um so yeah, if you're using the Slim, you can connect wirelessly or you could use the Ethernet cable. And so yeah, you, if you need a wireless adapter for a FAT, then you can go to GameStop. Uh, you can go to Amazon or eBay, one of them, and they should have one for you. So uh, the next thing I want to explain is how to actually get online. Now, as you know, all my consoles are set up with Ninja. And Ninja is the most reliable server. Uh, me and Kara have had an Xbox, and obviously, and we've tried Ninja. We paid for it for about five months. 
Now, that was a lot of money. That was about $1,000 for five months for both of us because we had two different consoles. And um, they, we lasted all that five months. So we never got banned on anything. And that's the truth. Um, so it's a, it's a good server for sure. It's honest, but the prices are just crazy. Um, so yeah, uh, you're gonna need a stealth server to get online. You cannot, I have a lot of people that ask me, they're like, is a stealth server optional or do I even need it or what? And you have to have a stealth server to play online. You can't just remove it and expect it to connect online. Uh, if you remove the stealth server, you're gonna get a failed connection issue um, until you put another stealth server on. So right now, I don't have a token for my console. So. Uh, if we go over to Ninja, I mean, uh, if we go over to System and Network Settings, uh, I'm already connected right here. And uh, if you guys want to switch your stealth server, I'm going to have a part that I'll show you what to go to um, in a minute. But uh, first thing you want to do before you switch your stealth server or, or use Ninja, you want to connect to the internet first. Um, so if we go to this and we test the internet, uh, it'll say, <clears throat> since I don't have a token on Ninja right now, so I'm not paying for their service right now to play online, this is what you're gonna get. You're gonna get a failed blocked error. So it says connected, failed, and then blocked. So, uh, that is normal because Ninja is blocking you from playing online because you haven't paid for their services. It makes sense, right? So, um, if you guys get a different error than this right now, and it just says failed at the top one, and that is actually a different error. Um, what you're going to want to do for that error is you're going to want to go to configure network, then click RB, and it should take you to additional settings. And then usually these usernames and passwords and host names and stuff like that are like, they're set up to someone else's internet. Uh, and sometimes I forget to factory reset these. So just click restore to default and click yes. And that's just gonna delete all the network saved info and stuff like that. And then back all the way out. And you're gonna have to reconnect to your internet and you know retype your password and all that stuff. Uh, unless you have ethernet cable. And then just test connection and then it, you should get the failed and blocked thing which is normal now what the failed and blocked means is ninja is actually uh it's enabling and it's enabled uh live block and live strong um once you put a token on ninja uh it'll actually give you um it'll actually disable live block and live strong on its own so you don't even need to do that uh, you, you wouldn't believe how many people would come to me and be like, um, you know, why is my console not connecting? And they would have the same exact issue and it's because they haven't paid for Ninja. And so yeah, you, you gotta have a stealth server. You can use a free one. Um, I'm not actually going to be purchasing a token cause I don't need to. Um, but if you guys do need to purchase a token, let me show you how to actually do that. You would go to their website which is xbls.ninja and you have uh, if you need their XEX you can always download it from here as well uh, and that'll fix some issues if you have any like freezing or anything like that they have over 11,000 users by the way you guys can go and look and read all their services but uh, you can click on one of these and pay with a credit card or you can message one of the PayPal sellers on AIM and um, yeah I use this guy usually and he's a pretty nice guy if you guys do buy from any of these sellers for the PayPal make sure you recommend me be like Davis or Nall or Sharky's Customs or Davis you know whoever you want to call me to say that you know I'm rec they recommended you to buy from them so um, so yeah, don't forget to recommend me. That'd be great if you guys could do that. You know, if, if you forget, that's okay. But uh, that just helps me out. So, um, anyway, 
once you do that, once you buy a code, you should get a token in your email. And then once you get that token, you're gonna click the guide button and you should have this load up, should be Ninja. And as you can see at the bottom, it says zero time remaining. And if we click, uh, we go all the way over, we go down to Ninja token menu, and then we can redeem token, check Ninja code, refresh Ninja I and I, you know, basically the one we're looking for is redeem Ninja code. So uh, click that and then this will load up and then you can type in your code. And now make sure your code is actually for Ninja and not for some other server. So now after you redeem this token on Ninja, your console will restart one time and then you should be online. Now, this is very important for you guys to know, there's a avatar update that shows up. Now, if your console's on the latest dash because you've already checked and you get this update, all it is is an avatar update. Now, if you're not on the latest dash, then don't update it because you could break your console. So, um, just make sure, that's why I showed you guys that you need to go to Pastebin and, uh, you know, pay attention to this dashboard uh, version. So. Now, as long as you're on that dashboard version, like I said, uh, and you get the update right after you redeem this and it restarts, um, you know, then it's good to go. You can update it and it's fine. It's not going to hurt anything. So, um, after that, um, I'm going to show you guys now how to actually switch your stealth server if you don't want Ninja. And I'm just going to show you guys links and stuff like that. Okay guys, so say you don't want Ninja because it's too expensive or, you know, whatever reason. Um, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to YouTube and you're gonna find a stealth server that you want. So type in stealth server and then type in the latest dashboard version, which uh, if you if you watch this, it may be outdated. And then, you know, just go back to that link and, you know, use those numbers right there, put those there. So, or right now it's on 17511 and it's uh, January 24th, 2017. So, uh, you know, be sure to type in the right one and then you click search. And then you should have all these stealth servers that pop up. Now, you don't have to use any of these. This is just a way of finding more stealth servers. Uh, you have you have other websites like 7 Sins and TTG and stuff like that that have other stealth servers. Uh, so yeah, and then you can click filters, click this week or whenever, and it'll show you like more updated videos. Um, some of these, like this, is just garbage. Um, and then Advocate Live and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, some servers are just terrible and some are good. So uh, the only other servers I would recommend is Real Nigga Stealth and Deception. Uh, that's besides Ninja. I mean, those other two servers are cheaper than Ninja. So, um, and then how to switch your stealth server. Uh, you can go, you can type in switch stealth. And if you search that up, mine will be like the third video. Um, you know, it's just right there. And it'll show you how to switch it. And you would just download the XEX from the server. And then you know just use that video and switch it and it's really simple it's like really easy to do um and you can also look on your paper as well it should have a thing that tells you how to switch your stealth server um and you can look in the link in the description as well of this video all right so now you guys have that have that information that's good and i'm going to show you how to use uh neighborhood real quick um so let's see, if you need neighborhood, then you can download it and link in the description. And let me actually remove these real fast. All right, so neighborhood, you load it up and you have this. Uh, you click add Xbox 360, click next, and then it's gonna ask for your IP. Now, I showed you guys this before. Um, if you click, let's see, I think you can click on this. Oh yeah, so that IP address right there. So at the top of the screen, you see automatic, and then you see that IP address. 
Um, that 192 ending in 102, that is actually your IP address for your console. You can also get this 3XEX menu as well by going there and then clicking LB and it, and it should be at the bottom like I showed you guys before. So uh, I'm gonna type that in right there. All right, so we got that in there. And then it's gonna ask for this. Now, if it doesn't connect, because it, it obviously found the, uh, the IP address console, um, if it doesn't show up, then uh, your console is actually uh, not connected on the right internet. So if your computer is on a different internet than your Xbox is, then that is the reason. They have to be on the same exact internet, and it doesn't matter if it's wired or wireless, it'll still connect either way, because right now my computer, why is this thing getting dark? My computer is actually wired right now, so it has the ethernet cable going into it, and then my Xbox is wireless, so that doesn't even matter. Uh, it just matters that it's on the same internet. All right, so uh, it's asking if I want it to select the default that I see, or use it as a default 360 console. Now, if you're gonna be using mod tools and stuff like that, you're gonna wanna click yes, uh, and then click next, and finish. Now, if it's not set as a default console, I don't know why there's two of them, but uh, if it's not set as a default console, your mod tools won't connect to your Xbox. So, um, if you do already have some at it, you can just right click on it and then click set as default. Now, you, know, you have a few other things you can do. You can do screen capture. I'm not sure if it actually works for this. Yeah, it does, never mind. So yeah, you can screen capture and it shows exactly what's on my screen right there. So it's pretty sweet. Um, and then you have, so you have that and then you can reboot your console. Um, synchronized time, I'm not really sure what those the security and synchronized times are. Um, so yeah. And if you double click on it, it'll take you to this and then retail hard drive. And then you can actually view all the files from here and you can actually start games and start apps and stuff from neighborhood and it's pretty sweet. Um, so like you would basically just click on one of the XEX. If you click on any of these right here though, it's gonna freeze your console uh, or fatal crash it, so you don't do that. So like say if we wanted to go to dash launch, we could just click on that, click, the, click dash launch, installer, and then default that XEX. And as you can see, it takes us right to dash launch. So, you know, and it works the same way for other things too. All right guys, so uh, if you have any other questions, just hit me up on Kick, and I can help you guys out. Uh, just come to me with your order number so I know who you are and all that good stuff. Um, so yeah guys, uh, you guys have a great night and I hope this helped you learn how to use your console and all that good stuff. Peace out.